welcome to the Blind Sense Podcast. My yeah. name is Mike. My this name is my co-host. <laughs> I didn't know you were going to do that. My name is Morris. <laughs> it's all good, Morris. <laughs> <laughs> Fair warning. Well, I, know. It's, it's I, I I have been getting my Jack Sparrow on over here before we started this episode, so the rum. Yeah. The Where rum, did all the rum go? That's it's not gone, gone yet, but it, it may be by morning. So, <laughs> before we get too much farther, let's hit you with the intro, huh? I'm gonna do my thing. <laughs> Starfinder. How about that, Mike? Yeah. I really like System Morris, that's all I'm gonna say well, right now. You know, I've been babe in the woods right now because like I should have been researching this week it was like my one homework to do, but I was actually working my day job. So I don't know as yeah. much as I should right now. And we're just gonna kinda go through this and get uh, your impression and my ver first impression on what's going on here. Pretty much, um, yeah. And, you know, rum, because why could that possibly make this worse? <laughs> well, it could make it better. Exactly. Yeah, it's, it's, things might start going right around this podcast. Also, uh, we're going to yeah. mm -hmm. try a different format, slightly different. Was, we're going to make this one shorter and see how that goes. I'm trying to get these out more frequently to you guys. Uh, yes, we've noticed that shorter podcasts seem to get better responses, so yeah. we're going to go with that. You know, you would think we'd be smart enough to pick that up without having to see it in it practice. It took us a while. And yeah. like, hey, it's only six episodes. We're good. Yeah. We're new. <laughs> uh, uh, it's all good. I'll get it eventually. So, anyway, Starfinder! Yeah. Where should we start? Uh, probably classes, races. I classes. don't know. Well, races kind of are raising yeah, more flags than me. Give me your impression of the races thing, because you, you got a pretty strong opinion on that. So... so I'm paging through, I'm seeing humans, I'm seeing new races, I'm like, okay, that's pretty good. And I'm not seeing elves, and I'm not seeing dwarves, and I'm not seeing half-orcs, and I'm like, what's going on? And right. it's not until I get way, way far in skimming through everything the that's legacy here. chapter. Yeah, so what's going on with Legacy, Mike? I don't know, they just wanted to do something new, and... and basically give you a new suite of races to play with, I guess. I don't know why they put that in a legacy chapter and just didn't make, hey, we got 12 races in the races chapter. You know what I mean? But so, that, that's the way they did it. I guess we have to live with that. But yeah, you know what I mean? Before we decided to start this podcast, I was like, screw it, let's just talk about this uh, on the record. Like, I'm looking at this, I was complaining to you, it's like, okay, I get it. Androids, humans, uh, Kasathas. Kasatha, four armed race, yeah. Yeah, Lashuntas, Shirins, Vesk, Yosk, uh, or Yosoki. Um, and I'm like. Yosoki is the way my computer pronounces it, which, you know, Which is guy, probably more problem. correct than Drunk Morris is. But <laughs> I'm right. looking at this and I'm like, ah, yeah, okay, that's all well and good, but why are you putting dwarves and elves and and in the yeah. background yeah uh, you really have to get to the, the history chapter i suppose to be able to figure that out but it it kind of makes sense and then it's like eh, it's kind of an arbitrary decision for my taste i mean you can still play those so they still give you the stats it's just it's kind of weird the way they do it but eh, whatever you yeah. know but I'm I'm seeing at least the new races are, look pretty good. Humans, obviously, which is not a new race, but you know we're we're spacefaring Still people. Still my now. favorite because I understand them. Well, so. one hopes anyway. I know sometimes when we nerd out a little too far, the rest of the humans don't understand me. But well, <laughs> yeah, yeah. that's that's the humans' problem. Exactly. 
Um, we've got androids, uh, which apparently, according to the what I've glanced at the cortex, they appear to have been uh, human creations, and then they're they're kind of not really divorced of emotion, but some of the other races have trouble distinguishing when they're emoting versus when they are not showing and emotion. They have just they have trouble in their own issues, but yeah, yeah. Um, it's very similar to the, 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 the Android race in Pathfinder. Slightly, there's some minor changes here and there, but it, it, for the general purposes, it's basically the same race. Now, I just see, I look at androids, and always this, this and I mean, like, we we talked about some of the inspirations that they have towards the back of the book. Um, you know, Blade Runner, you know, things like that being among them. And I see it very easily going super, super dark with androids. Because uh, that's just well, what it has a tendency. They sort of like a slave race, and they recently basically got their freedom. Yeah. So. Aren't, aren't humans great? <laughs> yeah. But that's what has a tendency to happen in the future. I mean, yeah. And it's, that's, it, it's a typical science fiction trope, so I understand it. It's just... Eh. Yeah, I mean, like, I, I can't... I really like androids. Honestly, I like their their stats. I like their stat arrays. I like their abilities. I can't fault them for doing what they're doing with androids in this setting. It's just that, like, it's kind of like zombies. Like, if I wrote it, I'd probably write it the same way. But I'm just worried that the market's going to get oversaturated with too much of the same. True. You know? I, I, like, my three favorite races are humans, androids, and Lashanta. I don't like... Y Yasoki because they're small because I just don't like small races. I'm sorry. I, I like I like the flavor of them better than say halflings or gnomes I, or whatever. I but hear just... that, but I mean like Yasoki yeah. to me, it it's like one of the other things they had in this document is that they were uh, inspired by Guardians of the Galaxy, and though they are rats, exactly. though they are rats and not raccoon, you know they're like little mini rat folk. Uh, the Yasoki so clearly our rocket raccoon is it is fucking yeah, I've, disgustingly I've heard obvious. Comparisons on the message boards about the same thing. But yeah. Uh, how about we jump over to Lashantas just so we don't spend too much time on one race? Yeah, on each race. Yeah. What I, uh, I like Lashantas. Really so, like uh, they're naturally gifted psychics. What's up with that? Well, I, they they have like a limited. To telepathy like they can talk to people out to 30 feet as long as I think you have to share a language but still um, they, they, it's basically the same Lashanta that they had in previous editions of, of Pathfinder but they changed the they slightly changed they used to be very demorphic where it's like oh yeah the males were all you know hairy little short dudes like dwarves and the females were tall skinny you know charismatic um, they changed them around to like you can pick. So like I can pick to be a short, you know, beefy female or a, you know, a tall, skinny female with you know. It's and a lot of the reasons I I agree with. Hey, you can choose. But then it's like, why would anybody want to be a short, stocky, you know, unattractive person? I just hey. Well, you're not. <laughs> You're I'm, just, short I'm just giving you a hard time. I'm like five nine, folks. <laughs> I am hairy, so, and so I don't think I'm I'm gonna win any uh, male swimsuit modeling contests anytime soon. <laughs> well, neither am I, because I'm forty seven and in a chunky. But yeah, uh, it's all good. So but yeah, I, just, well, I, just, I, I I like I like the fact that they did change it. So yeah, the, those Lashuntas, I think they were. If you were tell, if I'm thinking right, they were the race that you had told me before were like dimorphic race yes. in one of our previous episodes, and like I totally there wasn't. Was some, I was uh, not PSA picking up what you were putting account. down, but um, no. The the thing about that is that uh, another thing they had here is that it, it's inspired by Babylon Five, and that has me thinking about. Do you remember the episode? We were talking about Star Trek episodes before this, folks. Where it's like, do you remember the episode of Babylon Five where they had that one alien race? Was like, we had this uh, like hairier, more primitive sub race, yes. and like we started systematically eliminating them because obviously they're inferior. But now we found out that they had like the the 
very necessary part of our genetic code, so now our race is dying because we eradicated them. <laughs> yes, I remember. That's... Yeah. Don't be racist, kids. That's the they motto. They don't really go to that extent, but yeah. <laughs> Well, especially when you past, tell me they were, they were, you know, if you wanted to be a warrior, you chose this, blah blah blah. Yeah, especially when you tell choice. me though that they're less dimorphic than they were. It's like, Ooh, yes, they are. That basically, might go in a bad still direction. dimorphic, but you can pick. Yeah, like when you grow up, you go, I can be, you know, tall, skinny, and you know, charismatic, or we'll see how uh, Pathfinder. See this, the, um, the only thing I have a problem with with the we'll Shunt is, is that they changed that they both get a charisma bonus, but in the past mm. they both got an intelligence bonus. Well, we'll see how Paizo decides to play this one out, but I mean, just like, immediately I I think of that episode, I'm like this could end very badly for their race. Right. <laughs> I honestly really like the Shunt. I like them better than I did except for the fact that they both get charisma both instead of both getting an intelligence bonus. That's mm -hmm. the only difference. But I can understand because they wanted to vary the races, so they, you know, each race had a different stat array, and I think that's why they did that, but it's still kind of goofy to me. Uh, Kasatha's, the forearm guy's uh, staunch traditionalist that says, what's up with that? Oh, um, it's just... See, the Kasathas were originally on the spaceship that crashed on Galarian, you know, 10,000 years ago. That's in the present-day Galarian. Now, I don't know how far in the future from Galarian that Starfinder takes place, but it's much farther. Yeah, they kind of make it super vague because it's like some shit yeah, happened, well, and now it's 300 years later from when some shit happened, right? You can basically piece it all together if you, you're familiar with both systems, but yeah, it's it's kind of difficult. Yeah. Cassandras are nice, they have four arms, they're traditionalists, they like to wear veils, they don't like to see they don't like to see you eating stuff. Oh blah, that blah, blah, kind of traditionalist, blah, blah, blah. right. Okay. Yes. You know, sadly you're reminding me of the Rodney. I kinda game. like the race. It's <laughs> probably my middle race, you know what I mean? But I Sadly, when you say they don't like to see uh, people eating things, you're reminding me of that Rodney Dangerfield. They don't like field. to show their mouth when they're doing certain I'm gonna things. I'm going to finish this joke, damn you, no matter how many times you cut me off. There's a Rodney I'll Dangerfield see. bit where um, he was, he was for me, food has replaced sex completely. Why, I even had a mirror installed over my kitchen table. The other night, my son walked in on me. I covered my main dish, you know? <laughs> Yeah, that's dangerous. All right, <laughs> yeah. Okay, Sheerans, uh, terrifying hive mind bug people. Yeah, okay. Sheerans are interesting. It's just they're a little too weird for my taste, honestly. So one of so the, I really like what they did with them, but just not something I'd play. One of the complaints that I have with this that may raise a few red flags for some of you audience members, please feel free to leave your hate in the comments. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so you've got male, female, and then in between. What? A third, a third sex. They're drones, or <laughs> I, I can't even remember the terminology they use to describe them. But they're, they're not drones, but they're. I don't know. So it's it's very you can be whatever sex you want to be, but it's very important that we not new to the setting. They're, they're like, interesting like, because they're different, but they're just I, they're bugs, so, man. They're bugs. That's all. I swat them. That's all I'm saying. So just, okay, to suddenly sound uh, less judgmental than Mike, which I did not think where this, is where this was going. I was reading something recently that was about uh, there's a species of bird, which I forget. Sorry. I'll blame the alcohol, not my shitty memory. Um, there's a species of bird where they have males and females of different color, which will lead into the vesk here shortly. And right. the uh, there's actually a group of males that they thought were like uh, females, but it turned out they were like beta males in this species of bird to the point at which the male birds will mount them however yeah. interestingly enough this gambit works for them for whatever reason because then in turn 
the once the males have tired themselves out, they spend some time with the females afterwards. So you know, it, it's it's not for me, man. But if it works for you, if it works for you, well, who am I to tell you how your physiology should work? Because I'm not what you call an alpha male myself. So you know, I'm just, yeah. so yeah, I prefer I prefer to think of myself as an omega, whereas like I may be on the bottom of the pile, but once I I come around, shit's already hit the fan, and I'm gonna mess you up. But anyway, a uh, Vesk. They're yes, Vesk. reptilians. In a lot of ways, I kind of like this species and, you know, creature, whatever, race. But then I was like, these guys are giant dickheads. And I'm like, <laughs> I just, no. They're like orcs, except not orcs. Yeah. Know? Now, I, though, that actually, uh, so far from what I've heard in the bear in mind i didn't do my homework i only have glib knowledge at this point uh, my only problem that i had with the vest that i've read so far is that they have that the males are very drab and plain and that the females are very colorful and larger than males ass backwards from normal the, the larger yes. thing yeah the larger thing's not an issue the females being colorful is because usually the coloration in like peacocks is to draw females in. The better you know, you take care of yourself and the more bright your colors are, the more they're drawn into you and will want to mate with you. And I mean, I, I understand wanting to make something different than, you know, normal. I just, I, I, just, I call it... Like normal Earth. I call you. bullshit because that's not how it really works. And if we're going to no, do... It's not how it works on this planet. It's, if we're going to do pseudoscience, you know I mean? let's go full pseudoscience, okay? But, like... Yeah, I, I kind of agree with you, but I understand why they did it the other way. It's it, just, it just doesn't... I it, don't necessarily agree with why they did it the other way. My know? main complaint with that I don't understand is that females at this point have both physical and presumably sex appeal advantage. Right. Uh, I... I don't understand getting both. So it's almost like the females are trying to draw in the males rather than the other way. Exactly, around, but then what's then, normal for this world? You know so I mean? the the problem with that 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 breaks down is like what rubric then do the female vesk have to judge the males by? I no fucking clue. <laughs> Just, yeah, 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 this I this guy's a real rageaholic. He's my kind of guy. I guess I you can know. make up whatever the hell you want for your game. I guess. You know, um, it's, so, fuck you, it's Mike. It's kind of a flimsy... I understand why they did it, but it's still kind of a flimsy. Yeah. But to keep us going, fuck you, Mike, saving the best for last, Yasoki. Which... Um, <laughs> I really like them, but I'm not a fan of small races, so that's... You know what I mean? Of all the small hey. races, like, compared to some of the other small races that i played in Pathfinder, i much rather play a rat person. Honestly, they're not quite as offensive to me as say no, as a halfling. Yeah. To be fair, folks, I freaking hate that. So one of the things that we've discussed way long ago, and maybe right. someday will happen, and maybe won't, is uh, creating our own setting. And one of the goals I definitely set for that, if that ever happens, is do not make halflings as obnoxious as they currently are. Like, make them something that you'd want to play. Because, um, yeah, I want to kill Mr. Frodo and his furry little feet. Let's put that. <laughs> Boy writes, we shouldn't even be here, Mr. Frodo. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> gnomes don't bother me in Pathfinder. Half do. It depends on the gnome, really, now, doesn't it? I, I still remember... Um, depends if it's an Eric gnome or an my gnome. No, <laughs> no, no, not even that. Like, um, do you remember, I think it was Dragon's Demand started out with that bleachling. Oh, oh well, yeah. Yeah, fuck that guy in particular. <laughs> but, well, that was the character, not so much the race, you know what I mean? Because bleaklings are... Bleaklings are... They have bleaklings in Starfinder as well. And... They're intelligent, but they're standoffish, and they're I just I like regular gnomes. Fey touched is what they call them in Starfinder, which are like, ah, I'm all happy, go lucky, whatever. I'd rather have that than anything else. Now, to be fair, that gets annoying too after a certain point, but you know what I mean. 
Yeah. It's still more preferable than, oh, yeah, I have all logic all the time, and yeah, fuck you, you know. <laughs> I just, yeah. But I thought you were a fan of Spock. Come on. <laughs> I like Spock. <laughs> all logic all the time, the baby. Spock That's not true. Spock really, Spock there. really came became more enjoyable, like uh, Star Trek VI. I was referencing that recently with... Uh, <laughs> it's like a lie, an omission. <laughs> and who can forget? Sorry if I'm spoiling it for any any of you youngins at home who are are listening to my profane podcast. Seriously, um, if they have not seen it by now, they need you. They you fucking issues. need to go out. Like skip the skip the first Star Trek original. The movie. first one. Go from go two on your phone. Yeah, go back to that one once you know it's good, but don't start with that one. Um, the Star Trek 2 and Star Trek 6, and then Star Trek uh, 4, Search for Spock, just for pure humor. Now, 4 is not Search for that's 3. Search for Spock is Oh, three. sorry, sorry. Four Voyage, Home. Voyage Home. I got, to, I was thinking of the right one, but with the wrong title. Yeah, I know what you mean. Um, yeah, Voyage Home for pure humor. I just but... wanted to clear it up. Clear it up for the or listeners. Absolutely, because they wouldn't, they wouldn't be nerdy enough so to know or anything. <laughs> but they it's would five of our friends and their friends. They so they would funny. ream me out in the comments, I'm sure. And uh, eh, screw them. But anyway, <laughs> they don't like it. Fuck them. <laughs> but uh, no, I love uh, where we end off on on Star Trek Six. My dad watched that ad nauseum and just got me more and more into it. So General it's, Chang it's, and it's a good episode. And um, movie. Uh, Spock at the end is like if I were uh, Uhura says like Star Starfleet's hailing us they say we're to return to space stock to be decommissioned and Spock they look at Spock and Spock's like if I were human I believe I would answer with the phrase go to hell <laughs> if I were human <laughs> but See, um, well, well, that's a lot of the way, if you think of Spock as a Lashanta, you're probably close. Okay, I can live with this. With the, well, the less, you know, strength-based one. Although, uh, you know, Spock's, Spock's probably all of those put together, but yeah. So, if I'm understanding how this new system's supposed to work correctly as well, uh, you have character themes, and that is supposed to further supplement class. Your theme is like what traits used to be. Okay. You remember the traits used to pick? Its themes More are very less. similar. It's like, oh, I pick a, I pick a, a religious theme, and I'm like, yeah, I'm a priest, so I so, get. So yeah, I see you've got. You get Ace. a bonus to whatever stat they choose, plus a couple other small little bonuses. Okay, so I see Ace Pilot and Bounty Hunter, pretty self-explanatory. Outlaw. Um, yeah, priest, pretty self-explanatory. Icon is an interesting new concept. Icon is basically, I'm a celebrity. You're, you're uh, either Tom Cruise or a J-pop star in space. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. Um, or you're rock and roll, whatever, yeah. But yeah. Scholar, so academic background. S scholar, yeah. Uh, spacefarer, so I guess it's kind of a drifter? Uh, vaguely, yeah. It's kind of like, I, I'm in space, so I'm being, I'm, I'm, I travel space a lot. You're a traveler. Yeah. Uh, Xeno seeker, so like you really like to meet new races you like to meet new races and new yeah and uh themeless is i didn't ever figure out what to do with my life themeless is yeah i don't none of my, none of the previous things fit my thing so this is what i'm gonna do i'm assuming as as you know supplements and things come out they'll start adding more of those archetype kind of things but yeah hmm. And there are, of course, skills, but since we're trying to keep this short and, you know... Skills, we'll there's, a lot le there's about ten less skills than used to be in Pathfinder. Um, mm -hmm. They combine, like, life science, you have life science, computers, you know, more of a, more of a, uh, more of a techno-based kind of skill system rather than fantasy-based. Nah. Like, they combine a lot of, like, physical science, life science, they combine a lot of different skills together... Um, it's just, it's, it's, it makes sense for the system. We'll, get, we'll say that. Okay. So we've got classes to, um, seven different classes in the system. So like mechanics, which of course you're going to need those. Mechanic is pretty cool. I, 
we probably should start from the beginning, which is the end boy. That's okay, the well, if that's how you want to do it, because I was trying yeah, to skip that well one. Just, we just break them down and go from there. Because we're... End boy is very bard-like without spells. So everything very that I'm about. party kind of, hey, I'm the captain of my starship kind of thing. So, like, if this were Knights of the Old Republic, it would be Scoundrel, and this is what I'm all about. <laughs> Actually, Scoundrel would probably be more like the opera. <laughs> Yeah, well, 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 at least the way I build I build my character in that game. But anyway, um, yeah, acrobatics, aesthetics, bluff, engineering, blah 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 blah. Your um, envoy is your face character. It's like, hey, I'm the guy that you know, I'm the guy that talks to everybody kind of character. Mm-hmm. And then after that, I think what's that after that? Mechanic? Then you got what's mechanic that? next. Um, I'd the imagine mechanic is basically your druid in space. Um, you can either pick a uh, a a bot with as a, a companion. No, oh, and I'm I'm also gonna call. You take a, as I'm, basically, it's an upgrade for your brain that basically lets you do other things. Hold up, as I'm paging through this, Mike, bear in mind I did not go in depth, but I'm I'm calling total bullshit on you. On page sixty-seven, we have scoundrel theme outlaw. It's totally an envoy uh, subdivision. Yeah. So screw you. <laughs> well, but it's like I said, it's it's scoundrels kind of a a, a combination between the envoy and the operative. Mm. Which your operative is basically your. But yeah, person. I'd imagine that uh, mechanics are fairly important in this setting, if not supremely important. Um, um, they're not necessary. But they got a lot of really cool. Yeah, neither is a fucking to cleric to heal your ass in Pathfinder, but it's like, highly advised. Like they can interface with computers really well. Um, they can fix shit really well. Um, they're relatively decent combatants. There's nobody with a poor com- poor combat rating in the system. That's there is that. Mm. There's nothing with less than a three quarter attack progression. So. They're pretty decent. I honestly like the one. I don't like the one with the bot. I like the other one. So we've got mercenary, bounty hunter, uh, sort of for combat technician, enhanced commando, and then I'm seeing the two that I think are most opposed is uh, on the left saboteur and on the right starship engineer. So like you can have really somebody who will fix your ship on the right, or and somebody then, who will break the other person's ship yeah. and make it a. If it does what I think it's going to do, it will actually cause their ship to be malicious against them, which is awesome. Yes. You, can, <laughs> you can actually interface with other people's ships and computers <laughs> and stuff and have them fuck up the other person's stuff. Yes. So absolute kudos for that idea. Um, I really like the mechanics. It's a very cool class. Then we have Mystics. Uh, Mystic is kind of your clarity class. So um, basically, you pick up like, uh, hey, I'm gonna be, I'm a healer, or I'm a, you can do a bunch of different. See, the, the difference between this and Pathfinder is this system does not have divine and arcane spells or psychic. They're all just spells. Okay. So, but the so mystic is the one with the cure spells and stuff. So. Okay. Would it be advisable then to have a mystic in your group, group as you would a cleric, or? Not so necessary because other people have other skills. How's that it's work? not as necessary as say as Pathfinder or some type of healer because you in this system you also have like oh I have med packs and stuff where you can heal yourself with you know med bays or you know just technical systems that will do the same thing. Okay. Um, now the Mystic is a pretty nice class though. I I I actually like it better than the cleric in previous class in, in Pathfinder. So. Eh. Um, operative comes next. Operative is basically a combination between a rogue and a spy, if you think about it that way. So they're more yeah. like they're more like spies, honestly. So they've got like hacker, investigator, thief, and trailblazer as their um, examples at the back. Right, and they um, have they have they do kind of a sneak attack kind of thing. They don't call it sneak attack. I don't remember what it's called right off the top of my head. But uh, basically, they can sneak attack with certain weapons. Like, uh, what's, 
The only thing that I found weird about that is they can't sneak attack with sniper we- sniper rifles. Which is exactly what the Trailblazer is holding, but sure, whatever. Which is weird, but they can sneak attack with, like, clubs and batons and stuff, <laughs> and handguns, but not sniper rifles. To be fair, it, that doesn't make sense thematically. I, I think it's mainly a balance. Yeah, That's I was going to say, like, like that doesn't make sense thematically, but think about how ridiculously powered most sniper rifles are. Yeah, it's it's more of a balance thing, and I understand that. It's just, it's kind of, it's just goofy, you know what I mean? Yeah. I um, mean, there's, there's a certain point where you, okay, balance is a good thing, and then there's a certain point it's like, okay, dude, that's just ridiculous. That dude, work. you know what the Twinks would do if they got a hold I, of that shit. Screw Twinks, though, right? <laughs> I know, like I. It's, the hey, whole idea is for G, GMs you, to yes, regulate the twinks. Yes, you and, and when they don't regulate the twinks, that's when problems occur. You and I both know that we won't stand for that shit. But people who oh. don't know what they're doing don't know any better. Well, but that's not my problem. You know? No, no, no. You know what I mean? It's not my problem to to police everybody else. You should you should allow it. Well. Thing is, it's your home game. You can let you do whatever you want. So there is that caveat, so to speak. You know what I mean? My home game, I would let you use sniper rifles. Is what no. I'm saying. So because you, also, I know you or K or Doug. Or, well, I don't know about Doug. Doug might use it. Doug but, would yeah. abuse it unless it got too redonkulous for his. I mean, even he would. He even would, he has he limits. Would curve himself if it came down to it. Yeah, but because uh, he's done it before. Yeah. Then we've got Solarian. Um, Solarians are weird. Yeah. They're really interesting. They're basically a melee type class, but they either use gravity, like like black hole powers, or sun powers. So they either do fire damage, or they use gravity to like draw you nearer or push you away. Or it's 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 a really interesting class. So like now, a, out of out of the seven classes, out of the six classes that I like out of the system, it's probably my least favorite out of those. So six like, are they kind seven. of a weird psionic in a way, or? I'm not. See, they're all about balance. Where it's like, well, you know, life and death kind of thing. It's okay, like so you know, I was gonna balance. ask you if it's like a thematic balance where it was like. It's kind. of. Because um, if, like, if you take too many gravity powers versus, you know, sun powers, it's harder for you to use stuff. And, you know, mm-hmm. and so it's, it's kind of, they kind of balance it out in a certain way. Like, you can't, you can't have more than one more power, like, gravity power more than sun powers. I think they call them pho- photon and gravity is what they call them. But if you have, like, so if you have two more, you know, photon powers, then you have gravity powers, then you start taking penalties and stuff. So it's more of a it's it's kind of like it's almost like the druids of this of the future, like you have to balance everything out kind of thing. So you know what's playing in my head now because I can't help it because I'm drunk and I'm thinking of awesome things. Uh, Thief, the Dark Project, one of the keeper books where like they give you the quotation from this is like the essence of balance is detachment. To embrace a cause, to grow fond or spiteful, is to lose one's balance. After which no action can be trusted. Oh, I miss video games. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> I miss I miss video <laughs> games because I freaking work. Damn it! I don't even work as much right now as I had yeah, been. Still but... time. I just don't. I can't do it because I can't see. So you know. Yeah. Well, you fucking... So all I have to do is read through stuff like Shadowrun. So all this, hey, or... everybody. If we somehow got Mike, like, I would play a game and describe to him what's going on, would you guys watch that, or would that be just dumb and obnoxious? Yeah, let us know. Let I'm, us know. Interested. I'd like to watch more <laughs> play stuff anyway, so yeah, there you go. So, um, yeah, Soldier comes next, and... I like the Soldier. Unsurprisingly, they have a Vesk pictured for that one. Well, yeah, because... That's their main thing is playing soldiers. So yeah, soldiers are. I tell you what, they did a really decent. Now everybody I've seen on the message boards on Pies, I was like, oh, the, the Blitz soldiers, the best thing ever. I'm like, okay, the Blitz soldiers okay, but I think some of these other ones are just as well. So I see they've got Samples, Bodyguard, Close Combatant, 
Sniper and Spell Soldier. That's somewhat interesting. Spell Soldier is the one I like. Which is sort of like the Magus from Pathfinder. Mm. But because you got a little bit of magical. Well, if you say or... Magus, that's pretty much all I needed to hear out of you, and I know why I like it, so. Well, because you get, like, with the Magus, you know how you could, like, put whatever you wanted on your weapon when you attacked? Yeah. The, the vest of the, the Spell Soldier sort of has the same thing going on. Okay. So I think they call it the Arcane Combat, if I remember correctly, in the archetypes or whatever. Because they have, because like there's different things you can focus on. Like the Blitz Soldier is more of a, I run up and hit shit, shit with a big, you know, heavy honk at what, you know, melee weapon. And then they have like the Range Combat, and then they have the Arcane Soldier, which is basically what I'm talking about. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They have an armor focused kind of one. And they each get different abilities at different levels, which I, off the top of my head, I can't remember, but yeah. Mm. But they all get them at the same rate. Like, well, at first level, I get this. At fifth level, I get this. At seventh level, I get, you know, it's basically all the same thing. Each of the different paths get the same thing. Okay. Now, uh, I know it's like, and eventually you can, like, there's a heavy weapon specialist. Like, well, you know, I use missile launchers and grenade launchers and shit. Seems a tad well, overkill to me. Well, I don't know how guy, they. Uh... You know, it's just using ranged weapons. There's a met, there's a melee guy. There's an arcane guy. There's an armor guy. There's... I don't know how you balance like grenade launchers and shit. That's a tad overboard sounding to me. But you know, if they could do it in there, I don't know. they, I they do a place. pretty decent job. They honestly do well because different types of weapons have different levels. So at first level, you can have up to like a third level weapon. So you shouldn't really pick, you shouldn't really be able to get something higher than a third level weapon at first level. Um, unless your GM decides to give you that, you know what I mean? It's sort of that sort of thing. And, you know, lower level grenade launchers don't do as much damage as higher level grenade launchers kind of thing. Yeah. So that's basically the way they control it. Now it might be a little bit weird. It might be a little bit out of whack, but it, it's, it's, it's it's a more of a balanced thing than the flavor does. You know what I mean? Yeah, that also that always comes to a thing that I need to sacrifice whenever we're playing a game like this. Is like I would like to do all flavor, but I understand at some points game mechanics need to take over. So yeah, and there's and there's some systems that actually do a better job of flavor versus you know whatever. Yeah. Uh, now because Starfinder is much better at it than Pathfinder is, I think. Um, yeah. But yeah. Now because we're running low on time here, because we're trying to make this one shorter, uh, I think we'll end with our next one is uh, one that I'm geeking out on is Technomancer, and part I of, like part of the reason I'm geeking out on this so hard is I'm a fan of Babylon Five, and yep. Techno Mages in that are. Yeah. Fucking incredible. And uh, I particularly... I'm so mad that uh, Crusade didn't get a, a better reception than it did. It only went for like it a season. It was a great show, too. It was it's, a really good... And I, I loved... I loved their mage that they had with them. Yeah, the Technomancer so was amazing. It was great. <laughs> I loved the entire cast, honestly, in that series. I thought it was a great series. And it just... But, uh, you know, like, yeah, it, 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 even in original Babylon 5, though, you can see the, the techno ma mages at work. And, yeah, um, by the way, uh, by the way, Eric, to, to do his whatever. Eric, to, Mike has been, Mike has, Mike has told me that you've been listening to this podcast, Eric. So at some point, I know you haven't finished Babylon 5. You need to, like, let me abduct you for, like, a week or like incrementally, and then I'll sit you down, and we're gonna watch seasons of Battle on Five, so you can see the whole thing. Damn it! What I, sh you know, what I should do is just we should just get a thumb drive and load it up and just hand it to. No, him. I want to be there when he sees this. Well, shit. Well, yeah, I do too, but you know, <laughs> it's probably not gonna happen. You know what I mean? Oh, uh, I already showed but, him. Hell, what we ought to do is when, if we ever do that thing in the in the winter where we all get together and do our whole con out of whatever. Sure. We probably should invite him along. For yeah, ride. there you go. Yeah. But, so, uh, hey, take a week off in December and we'll all go and meet up and do whatever, you know what I mean? But, yeah. 
uh, techno mages, um, pretty much techno mancers. Uh, you got a battle yes, mage. A, techno, a technomancer is basically combination between a hacker and a wizard. Yeah. If you think about it that way. Now, because they have up to six level, pretty much wizard spells. Yeah, I don't remember now, what I think the spells. They change them around a little bit, so they're not quite. They're, I don't know. I don't remember what, like which of the shows it was. I want to say it was Crusade, but I'm not positive on this one. There was a, a mage that was on a planet that was scaring people away with a large hologram of a dragon. I think that was the same mage that ended up joining them on Crusade. But I'm okay. not positive because it's they, they been need a to year drag or two. To scare away Veer on Babylon Five. Mm. I'm just not sure if that's what you're talking about. So, uh, no, that's a different episode. Um, okay, I'm I'm pretty sure it's the guy who uh, joins the crew. I have not watched Crusade for a while though. I it's, haven't. I just haven't. Watched so, it. folks at home, you may enjoy this as much as I do. Um, the guy who plays Lombard. Um, yeah, that'd be great. Oh, oh, yeah. He's Captain that. Nathan Gideon on Crusade. It's amazing. And a story that my friend Craig has told me that I don't know whether or not it's true, but it makes a good story either way. It's supposedly in office space, the college ring that he is wearing is allegedly actually the captain's ring from Crusade. <laughs> oh, really? Oh. I don't know if that's true, but that's an awesome story. I wish I could see because I'm probably prepared. Yeah. <laughs> it's a good story either way. But anyway, we got battle mages, we got a uh, corporate techno mage, uh, tech mage, and uh, research scientist and thaumaturge. You tell yeah. me anything about this thaumaturge thing going on there, Mike? Thaumaturge is kind of a summoner type thing. Uh, if I remember correctly, because they, they it was a prestige class back in Pathfinder or 3.5 or something. I don't remember exactly what it does, but I'm pretty sure it has something to do with summoning. So it's kind of a summoner type, which because there's no summoning spells in Starfinder yet, so I I don't I don't get it. But yeah, I mean, there's some binding spells like oh I can play or bind this person, but they don't have any summoning spells. Nah. So I don't. So that's okay. probably um, getting pretty close to time. We should probably cut it probably here. Probably, and we can we can pick it up later for the next episode because yep. we don't want to overdo well, it so everybody doesn't get bogged down. Yeah, and then, then then we'll yeah. try and put this out. Let's go right into another one, and then folks, we'll cut this off here, and then we'll pick up again for our next episode later. Where oh, let's talk about mega corporations, Mike. That seems, oh, yeah. that seems like a thing that we could go a long while saying. about. Down with Abador. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. All right, folks. So thanks for listening. Um, Enjoy, peeps. Yep. See you next time. Later. The theme music used for this podcast, Orc March by Snowflake, featuring Wolf Sebastian and Spinning Merkaba, is available from CC Mixter under the Creative Commons Attribution 3.0 license. You can find it at dig.ccmixter.org or find a direct link to it and its license information in our Blind Sense podcast descriptions. Hey kids, um, there seems to be a problem. Is um, you're, you're not putting the new cover letter on our TPS reports. You do know that we are using a, a new letterhead on the TPS reports, right? Okay, so if you could uh, go ahead and do that from now on and uh, email Mike at Volantrix at gmail.com spelled V-A-L-A-N-T-R-I-X That'd be great. All right, uh, good talk. We'll see you later.